jumping right into game number one of this best of three. The winner of this will go on to the semifinals, and then the winner of that will go on to the finals to fight Memo. And that's going to happen all in a row here. So we've got probably three hours of broadcast for you guys. Iron Steel going for his berries. It's a little clumped, but that, that should be fine. He does have access to... Ah, uh, That's a little tough, but I guess with Shang that'll be fine. The crossing is uh, directly in between these players. Mork being just north of it and Steel being just south. I'm going to give you guys a quick glance at this mini-map. As you can see, the gold is actually pretty clumped up over here, but there is this spare gold off to this side in this little corner, this little valley, if you will. Not, not very many fish on the sea. Most of the fish are actually grouped right on this box, if you look, of this, of this section of the river. So I believe this is where people are going to be docking anyways. So it's a frothy sea for these players. Whoever can control that is going... Ooh. Oh, did I? Oh, sorry. I accidentally hit my mute mic button. Thanks. Thanks for saying that. We're, we're back here. So, as I was saying, these gazelle for iron steel are a little bit close to the wall, and gazelle can get trapped against this wall. So it's really important to see if, if uh, iron steel is going to be able to get all seven of these towards his town center at the beginning of the match. And the gazelle for Morik are also pretty far away from this town center it's going to be tough for him to get this push as well we have two difficult pushes i'd say iron steel has the opportunity to, to get most of his but i think unless he's really careful two of these might get glitched up against the wall wow the stragglers for morik are pretty far away but as are iron steels iron steel already getting that first storage pit up going directly for the wood he potentially had an opportunity to go for an, a more aggressive storage pit location to get some shore fish. That would have been three and maybe some gazelle, but the safe wood, Iron Steel's preference in that regard. See Morik doing the opposite, going for the wood pit with the gazelle option. And it looks like Iron Steel has now scouted out nearly the entire river. He will know that this is the only crossing at this point. I'm going to check the timeline real quick. Morik with a two-bill advantage. Iron Steel may be getting a little hung up. Not finding these gazelles. He could be a little short on the food income. And that, actually, I believe that's that uh, vill differential is going to come from these berries. Uh, the way it works is that to get perfect drop-off, you really need to have access points for your villagers. And the way this granary and berry pit the granary and this berry patch rather sorry not berry pit was set up it was such that only two villagers had good berry positions and now he has three with walking and because he hasn't found his gazelle he's he's looking now this could be a bit of a panic idleville's everywhere as he's looking for his next food source but he does get the double block with the double dock block that is a tongue twister if i say so myself now he's going to be actually safe morak has no way across the map he did not sneak a villager and also iron steel has no way across currently there's the option for transport ships um at this point slingers could be a good choice for both players as soon as this dock block comes across axers really do lose their their uh viability so i think neither player will be attempting that strategy iron steel with 22 bills Really? Okay, so he finally found these, these berries. I think he might be disappointed that he did not find this gazelle patch. It was really close to TC, as rivers typically spawns you at least one gazelle patch, and he had access to this one as well. This wood pit, however, means he's going to have a lot of wood. His, 
I believe his tool time is going to be significantly further behind Morix, as Morik has found his food source much earlier. Question is, will that make a difference? Iron Steel already getting a fishing boat out on the river. Twenty-six fills now. We could be seeing a bronze game from Iron Steel. He scouted this whole map. He knows there's another berry here too. He he found this berry too. So he's probably feeling pretty confident. He's got a lot on wood. I think we're gonna be seeing a tool from him in which he focuses on river control. And then he's gonna go bronze. Um with 28 villagers now. So Mork is going to be hitting Tool really soon. And he's building his barrack. But what's he going to build after this? If he goes for another barrack, we're going to be seeing Slingers. Axers at this point are just not an option. I think with one barrack, he can start pumping out some Slingers. And then we might be seeing a market come out from him to get the upgrade. He is mining stone, so we're going to be seeing Slingers from Morik in this instance. And now Slingers are going to be essentially the worst thing for Iron Steel in his current strategy. He's going for a bronze. The question is, can he pull it off? He's going to need a lot of ships, and he's going to need the range upgrade on the ships, otherwise the Slingers can easily brute force their way across this crossing, putting Iron Steel in a really vulnerable position. His time is getting worse and worse. 31 villagers! Jeez. So he should be hitting Tool pretty soon, because that's 26, so his Tool time should be really really soon the barracks going up he'll probably hit tool in the next 30 seconds now the question is will he have enough time to produce scout ships to defend because he doesn't have any way to make armor he might need to transition into slingers of his own but he has no one on stone yet the two barracks from morik no upgrade available just yet the upgrade is going to be coming in and this is going to be devastating for steel if he does not recognize this threat it's growing and it will be problematic for him he has a much superior economy so it depends on how quickly he can get to bronze the upgrades coming out i'm still still with no ships on the dock four slingers to pressure this i don't know once you get to like six slingers with the upgrades, you can start just fighting uh, scout ships without, as long as the scout ships don't have. Do we see a market? Uh, two stables. Is he going for scouts? Now this, see this dock already three four south. This is getting problematic. He he needs a he needs a response. Yes 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 yes. Iron Steel is going to be maybe going for. Bronze Age, but no market yet. Still no market. Scout's coming out. Our scout's going to be enough, though. He has the upgrades. Oh, sorry about that. I still don't see a market. And another dock for Morik. We could be seeing something a little devastating. So, this could lead to extra scout chips, maybe some hidden fish. But we have a counter dock, I guess, from Fog here. But this is the big issue for Iron Steel. He does not have enough scouts just yet. Once he gets maybe seven, he can fight this. Especially once the scout ship becomes... Once the scout ship is too far away. And this is six scouts. And he is going to absolutely shred these slingers with this number of scouts. And the first ship for Steel does come out a little bit late. Maybe getting a little awkward with the micro, but he has enough scouts here to clean up, and Morik is wide open. As soon as these scouts go in the aggressive, Morik is going to need to start building a responsive wall. Maybe some house walls, maybe some stone walls. There's a guy on gold. Maybe a mistake. Yeah, he noticed this is that now. He does not need gold at this point. So Morik currently just content to get some side fish going. Iron Steel with the opportunity to kill these scout ships with his own scouts and cross the river, playing a little defensively here. A lot of food invested, some idle bills on these granaries, on this granary. It's going to hurt his food income if he does not find us an alternative solution for food. 
Boric with a firm sea control, and this, that scout ship is just going to get absolutely destroyed here. <laughs> bam, bam, pop. You have sunk my scout ship, my scoutle ship. You know, like battleship, but it's a scout ship. I thought that was funny. So a lot of docks coming out. Moving across to get this extra food. Where is Iron Steel hiding his scouts currently? Where'd they go? Where'd they go? Didn't he have like three scouts here? Oh, there they are. The four scouts going in for the flank. Baiting out the slingers to get past the stables. Coming in. Coming in with a villager to help out. Just fun. One scout going down, another scout is severely damaged at this point, but the sea control is going to be Iron Steel's biggest concern at this point. The scouts will uh, be unable to cross if Morik uh, just puts the ships in, a right, in the right spot, right? Iron Steel focusing this side of the sea, maybe not noticing that this is a dock as well, repairing the scout ship in due time. Still going for scouts, I'm a little worried for him. Mork is not getting the numbers up. Mork does not have any farms at home, so Mork's only food income right now is this exposed berry and these few sh fish. Now, Mork building up probably a few scouts here, hiding it over here. But this ship count in the center sea is... It's going to be a bit alarming for Iron Steel, unless he has bronze incoming. He did have a significant bill advantage, but that has been... Nearly negated at this point. Neither player getting any build damage done yet. Mark moving forward with the slingers, camping the stables at this point. The scout ships working out. We have five on six, so the number advantage for Mork in this fight. But the range upgrade is there for Iron Steel, but he's not paying attention. Neither player paying attention to this just yet. And that battle is going to swiftly go in favor of Mork. Unless Iron Steel has some crazy micro coming and all the slingers cleaned up again. The food investment, the kill loss is going to be heavily. Wow, the kill loss heavily in favor of Iron Steel here. Ships on the sea. Wow. Iron Steel just getting outproduced. Oh, and Morik maybe learning from his predecessors. Not predecessors, maybe learning from people who have been knocked out of this tournament that bowmen are actually a pretty good counter. But to make them an effective unit against scouts, you really need the range upgrade and the armor upgrade. The armor upgrade being critical because it makes them really tanky in comparison to scouts. But Finally, a player getting across and one villager going down for more. But a huge food investment for Iron Steel to lose them all to the Bowmen. Now four Bowmen here, five Bowmen. We should be seeing some of these upgrades come in for the Bowmen pretty soon. It looks like we're going to have a very extended tool war. Both players really investing into these tool armies. The kill count has been a little bit pushed back. From that extreme imbalance before, now this is this is getting dangerous. This is a lot of bowmen. The bowman buff of plus a uh, minus four seconds on the train time means that you can mess them quite effectively. Skirmishes going across on both sides of the map without that plus two melee armor. The scouts will be able to get decent damage. Five damage per hit on these bowmen, meaning that a cluster of them, a cluster of scouts, oh and he gets a huge hit on the eco here. With the armor upgrade, these villagers are going to be severely hindered, but Morik going for the counter attack here, a few slingers coming out for iron steel to help counter the bowmen, so we're getting a real triangle of combat units here. And iron steel making his way and progressing on the sea with the wood line under so much duress is more going to lose control of the sea <laughs> the villagers coming forward to bone but at this point the armor upgrade has come in for Morik's bowman and wow these scouts are getting so much value Wow, the kill loss is going to be now, wow, 2 to 1 in favor of 
Iron Steel, and the timeline swing is huge. That's massive. And also on the sea, Mork is being pushed back. Mork with only two ships. Iron Steel with seven. One severely damaged. Comes forward to repair the Micro God. At it again. Another group of Slinger and Bowman moving across, but does Iron Steel have the response, appropriate, the appropriate response? Getting a quick house wall to protect his villagers from this quick attack. Yes, the scout's available to get a collapse on this. And a couple Slingers in the mix to deal with Bowman and help fight Slingers a little more evenly. Wow, and Mork's army is going to get cleaned up once again as it crosses the river. I think the economy investments from both players is in balance at this point. I think that no, the military investments, like the resource investments in military, has been extremely efficient for Iron Steel in these fights. The scouts have been getting their value because of all the slingers they killed. Iron Steel needs to be careful about this. Iron, Iron Steel really needs to be careful about these scout ships. It needs to be able to repair. This is awkward. <laughs> this is a really awkward battle. Warwick somehow managing to nearly trade evenly in these fights, even though he's outnumbered. But Iron Steel on this side of the map, covering that uh, other dock. So Morik only on two docks at this point. Iron Steel on three. So the production advantage should now swing to him. Wow. Incredible game. Three elephants in reserve for Iron Steel. If he gets off the wood line, he could really get a boon to his eco and maybe threaten a bronze click. The scouts, once again, getting in on the economy. Yes. Of Morik, and Morik's gonna have to call yes. it at that point. Scouts are so effective at killing villagers, especially once they get those upgrades. Very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Those scouts. Absolutely devastating. Morik maybe being overconfident with his slinger numbers, pushing not, on, not once, but twice into these stables. You'd think he would have adopted... So the first wave of Slingers came across, and it was really good timing. There was a lot of Slingers. He pushed in. He got through the docks. He got the sea control for just a little bit. But as soon as he got to the stables, he got absolutely shredded. Right? His response was to build another army of Slingers and do the same thing. I think that was probably the only blunder of the game. Other than maybe not walling in his villagers... As soon as he saw a scout, I think you need to see. I think you really need to see that uh, that wall. And as soon as as soon as you see a scout, you just need to be like, "Wow, my villager!" If one scout gets in on twenty bills, <laughs> the scout's gonna kill ten of your villagers. Anyway, fantastic game. Eighty kills to forty, exactly two to one ratio. The economy's pretty close, but Miguel with a, or Iron Steel rather, sorry, with a decent advantage. I'm going to get this second game up and running. Excuse me while I do this. Wow, great game though. We're seeing a real, the real, the, the balance patch, the recent balance patch, I think, is a really nice, fresh, fresh change to the scene. I think, I think seeing tool wars that are this diverse in a very competitive tournament between two extremely talented players just shows how, I think, how good the current balance patch is, at least in terms of mixing it up. It might not be perfect balance, but I will say I commend the Forgotten Empires team for this. I just need to check that I did that to the right person. Yes, okay. Oh, no, I made that 19. Nope, 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 no, 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 <laughs> sorry. Oh, they're not in here yet. Did I not name it the right thing? I think I messed this up. I just named it game two. Maybe the player was hosted already because I took a, I was a little late. Okay, no. I'm just going to call it the right thing. Whew. Well, anyway, that was a great game. 
So uh, hold on, let me let me catch up on these uh, chats while we get the players in the lobby for game two. Iron Steel more like doubt. Hmm, I'm not sure. He's old enough, right? Iron Steel slightly older. I wish spectators could see resources. Yeah, that is just not an option for DE at this point. Yeah, Matt, I also thought he was going to go bronze that game, but he, he opted not for that. You'd love to see Iron Steel ever so good. Well, if he wins this match, we're going to be playing that directly after, so potentially very soon. How do Axemen fare with full upgrades? They they do um, all right. The scouts have a slight advantage um, early on because they have um, slightly no they have they have worse slight stats because the Axer gets more damage off once once both the scouts and the Axers have full upgrades. It's um it, it's it's close, but the the balance goes towards Axemen. Impressive, indeed. Those players playing very well in that game. Interesting to see the wall off for Iron Steel falling. He was still able to do that with that 200 wood investment. You'd think. Um, I would say everything made him win. He had the. He had the eco lead early, but I mean, Moore kind of took it back by killing a lot of the the docks. Yeah, Morik not walling the woodline against scouts is probably the only blunder I could notice. That's probably, I think that was the most um, important aspect of that game and why Iron Steel won. Morik maybe a little overconfident in his bowmen, but when he sent them across the map, you can't cover your woodline with the bowmen. Yes, yes. Okay, we're going to jump right into game number two here. This is match point for Iron Steel if he's able to win it. And this would advance him to the semifinals, which we will be playing soon after this game, so don't go anywhere. Just taking a look at the map real quick. One crossing directly in the middle of the players, much further apart, so we could be seeing a slightly slower game plan or a proxy barracks from one of the players in order to get that tool damage done as soon as possible. Now, this time, Iron Steel has a much better granary than his last game. You see how he has um, no walk no walk foragers on three, four berries. This one's a small walk, but four of these villagers will get good times. He needs to finish. There we go. Um, looking good for him here. Mork, similar, has a nice berry. Mork should be able to find his gazelle pretty quickly here. Two big hills in the back, but I don't think those are going to be of importance here. Uh, interesting to note. Iron Steel is going to have the opportunity to wall behind the choke point, whereas Morik is going to have to wall the choke point. That's a significant difference because C control is going to determine if this is effective or if this is effective, and Iron Steel can still do the wall at the the smaller wall at the at the crossing. But Morik to wall behind the crossing is is massive. It, that's a huge building undertaking, and it's just basically improbable. It's, it's nearly impossible to accomplish that in this uh, style of game, this format. It's just too fast. You don't, you can't invest the resources in that. He's going to have to, if he walls off, he's going to have to wall off here or do a very bold crossing wall off and wall his opponent's land. We'll see if that comes to play, however. Elephants, not really good for Morik. His elephants are way down here so far that I wouldn't call them elephants, and this time Morik will be pushing the gazelle to his TC. Last game, if you recall, he built a storage pit on a wood line and did his gazelle there. The storage pit on the wood line is a little bit slower because your wood line is then inefficient and things kind of get clumped up and bumpy. And also you have to wait for the storage pit to start gathering that food here. He's going to get the gazelle pushed right up to his town center and it's going to be super clean food income from then on. Iron seal. Wow. This is, this is powerful. Maybe not realizing the DE bug with elephants, he's going to have to let it get really close or let it hit at you once. Currently, that's, it's getting patched out in the next patch if you're not aware, but it's, it's part of the game right now. You, you can't be hitting it twice. There he goes. He's paying attention now. There's the hit. And maybe blames lag. <laughs> Oof. 
You hate to see that happen in a tournament like this. That's a mistake that it happens to the best of us. It happens all the time, at least in pub games, you know, in just a regular match. Opting for a storage pit <laughs> that gets him two swordfish and also <laughs> makes that Ellie lure a little bit easier. Underestimating the power of these elephants. Should someone tell him? There he goes. He finally gets it, but at the loss of one villager, is going to put him far behind Morik now. Two vill lead, maybe three? It's hard to count now until he goes above 17. Yeah, so now it's just a one vill advantage for Morik. It's that one sad boy who died fighting, fighting the woolly mammoth. Food for the tribe. Because it's the Stone Age, right? It's basically the Ice Age, right? The Paleo people just eating mammoths and saber-toothed tigers. I don't know. My only knowledge of this period of time, of the Stone Age, rather, is from the movie Ice Age with the with the talking animals. Anyway, focusing back on the game. Sorry, that's a little little sidetrack. Still a one vil lead for Morik, but that's to be expected at this point. We're going to need to see, is, is Iron Steel going to go for... Is Iron Steel going to go for that really wide approach where he gets 28 vills in the in the in the stone age that may have been a record so far in this tournament most players are not opting for a 31 vill tool because he did have 31 when he hit tool age so are we going to be seeing that again from him it was maybe a little bit greedy it didn't get punished by axers because he was able to wall off now this is interesting did i miss something iron steel moving forward with two villagers is going to be able to deny wait Okay, so he values he values getting the villagers in over potentially getting an awkward fight going on here, and Mork is going to be sending his builder over as well. Note that it's 2v1 here in terms of building speed and capacity, but at this point, I don't think it's going to matter. Who's going to have the lead here? 20 vils to 19, so both players are going to be going for the brush. Neither player comfortable with... The booming aspect of the Stone Age. 1920 bills is about as as weak as you can get it while also being as strong as you can get while having a fast time and not risking running out of your early food sources. Because if you need to get like a third or fourth food source by building a pit, it can really delay, really delay your timing. So now this tool will come out for Morik. But where is he going to be building that barracks? Right on this hill. This hill is prime real estate for Morik here. If he can do axers on this hill, his barracks is going to be nearly invincible. If he can group a ton of slingers on it, that's going to be a, easily become a death ball. This hill is massive. There's space for an army. There's space for multiple buildings. This is an issue for Iron Steel. However, Iron, two vills behind... He's only 30 seconds behind in his tool age with two barracks already. That's the one vill to two vill advantage and <laughs> axers already across the map. Iron Steel not taking any chances with this extremely aggressive player. When he axe rushes, he commits to an axe rush. Maybe it's this elephant advantage in the shorefish. But Morik is going to be counterattacking. Depends on who can make safe here. Morik really trying to get this wall off done. That gazelle finally... I think that gazelle just died, so he can actually wall this off now. He needs to... He, he's going to wall this off. He's... Oh, Mork has made a huge amount of his economy safe as soon as he finishes this wall. <laughs> That's really funny that that villager just walked outside. But this house wall, the one weakness, potentially in danger of overchopping here. He needs to be super careful. Actually? Is there, is there a hole here? There might be a wall tile there that I can't see. It's hard to click. Now, Iron Steel on the run here. Let's check the kills losses. Three kills for Iron Steel. No for, none for Morik. But remember, that elephant rushed Iron Steel. And there's another kill. So now the kills have evened out. The kills have evened out. We're now at 3-3. Three, because three. remember... Oh, wait, no. No, 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 no. I lied. Something different died than I thought. And the migration. We have the exodus to the safety of your barracks. Interesting strategy. When you rush across a crossing or something like this and your buildings your aggressive uh barracks are on the other side of the map your, your economy is going to be safest if you move them there because now he has his axe of production closer to his economy so both players economies are just separate forests 
It's really close. He needs to be very careful that this axer, this building, doesn't produce too many axers to give him problems. Morik, with two axers on this wood line, will be pushed back. But he does have a scout ship, so this this is going to be really interesting pressure. If Morik micros these axers correctly, he can really win this fight with the scout ship's help. Scout ships penetrating through all armor at this stage of the game will be doing 5 damage per hit. And you can see that there, just chunking these axers. Where axers only do 3 damage a hit to each other, or no, 5 damage a hit to each other, the scout ship is going to be getting free damage. So it's like having an axer with range off to the shore. Now Morik may be getting a little bold here, moving in, trying to get some villager damage, but his axers are going to get cleaned up really quick. Economy, timeline, 21 to 19. Timelines are basically even. So essentially, we're working with this exodus and seeing how Iron Steel can make this work. It's going to be a ship battle for Control of the Sea to get fishing boats. There are none. Iron Steel, working with no food economy at the time. He's working. This is what he's got for axers. This is his army. The only army he can make other than this is boats. Iron Steel forced to run one of his scouts away. He's going to be finding this little boat, the solitary fisherman with his little hut. Massive battle in the middle of the map. This is the player's food economies, however. No, this is the player's, like, standing army. There is no production opportunity. Iron Steel, with one very weak axer, has managed to get more to get, waste some time. He might be able to win this fight. No, he will lose this fight. Now this one axer, 30 health. Shouldn't be able to get too much work done here if Iron Steel is responsive. Are there any damaged villagers? Who's he going to go for? Not a damaged villager, but the villager will go down as Iron Steel has yet to notice. Micro the weak one's back. Another villager will go down. So two vills for that Axer, and now Iron Steel has one Axer, and there are just none? None for Mork. One for Mork here, and it goes down. So now it's two... To one in terms of act, no, two to zero in terms of axe count. But the C is going to be going in favor of Iron Steel. Iron Steel with three ships on the sea, four ships. He's got two flamers though. If the <laughs> flamers, if these ships go down, could really negate the power. But no, Mork forced to retreat on the sea for now. He's got. Nearly even numbers, but the production will be in favor of Morik as Iron Steel's working with just one with just one dock at this time and he notices and he needs to build another dock now. But he is threatening this dock here. If Morik is able to squeeze a couple more ships out of that dock, he'll be able to get the numbers. Oh man. So both players working with their storage pits. So close. The Axe numbers still in Iron Steel's advantage. It looks like he was able to be a little bit more efficient with that initial food, but both players have run out of food at this point. So they're just working with the wood lines, and if they can try to get some boats on the sea, they'll be able to work towards some sort of economy. Oh, and another villager going down. I don't know what he was doing there. Way out of position. More Force back. That ship has 10 health. He cannot let that ship get to safety of repairmen. Here's a has a repairman. More with five ships now. One damage. The scout ship sent to oh man. That's rough micro. Getting a little greedy chasing that ship. And the scout ship advantage is now in favor of more. Very interesting. Mark taking the score lead. The economy still 21 to 19. So I assume both players. I assume both players have no food. In, have a what's it called? Hold on. This is a big battle. Big naval battle. The advantage is for Mark, but the proximity of the repairman could make a difference. Is repairman getting a little stuck? Trading ship for ship at this point, but now the HP and numbers advantage is too much. Morik hitting him up quicker and quicker. Iron Steel being forced back. We can take another look at that battle, and Iron Steel calls the GG. In the replay corner, we're going to be seeing that final naval battle, that asserted dominance. See, both players stuck with their wood lines. They have to engage fully and 
and focused on that naval battle. If you lose naval supremacy, you do not win this game. When the game falls to the stage, neither player had the opportunity or the space to make farms. Maybe Mork could have made some here as he had some safety, but that would have been at the cost of ceding the control of the sea because that would have been wood in favor of iron steel. Now that was a really close game. That was that was an incredibly close game, and we're going to be going to a game three for this set, which is um, interesting to say the least. This is the fourth set to see a game three. Excuse me while I set everything up, and I can take a look at the chat while we get the players in here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read the chat right now. Catch up on this. He lost the game by chasing that ship. Yes, I think so too. Think he called it early? Uh, I don't think so. Morik had enough ships to win the game at that point. He could camp both docks effectively with numbers and essentially force Iron Steel into a no food situation. Yeah, but actually, if you noticed on the right side of the map, I didn't point it out verbally, but I scrolled over there a few times. Mork was building, he had some fishing boats, and Iron Steel didn't. So that was food food advantage, and he was going to start making either villagers or enough axers to do something. I think he had two or three scout, two or three fishing boats on the, the docks at the right side of the river. Well, we're going to be going into game three pretty quickly here. Both players ready. Wow, this series, this set, it's uh, it's a little intense, guys. I'm excited. Start yes. the game already. Yes. We got the two yeses. I need to set spec. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Oh my gosh, give me the, the, that thing. Everything looks good. We're jumping right in. I'm excited to see this game. The winner of this match will go on to the semifinals. Now Iron Steel spawning as the yellow pieces at 12 and Mork in red. Down at this side of the map, Mork with the awkward berry. And so <laughs> this is really interesting to notice. If you remember in game one, Iron Steel had identical berries at ne nearly the same spot uh, on the map, but it was four and three and he put his granary here and it led to a vill deficit. I believe because of food or maybe he got housed, but I think it was because the walk time here, he's got five bills and a Shang, five bills with clean walk times. So I believe Mork has uh, built a better granary in this instance, just a little note. Iron Steel with a decent granary, he's gonna, he's gonna fall a little behind once he gets to this stage. If he doesn't get these gazelle pushed in pretty early, but he did spot them, so he should be able to do that and he's gonna start pushing now. So if we look, take a look at the mini map, there's the one crossing in the middle. This time, the fish are really spread out, um, as opposed to the last game where there, or the first game where the ship, the fish were really clustered in one little spot. Uh, we see, th whoa, what's going on here? We see three gold for um, iron steel and two gold for Mark, but I doubt that's going to come into play. Both games here have been decided in the tool age, so we should be seeing. A tool war again, I would assume, unless some player manages to make safe. We'll see what happens though. We've seen all stages of game. We've seen games that are fought in the Iron Age or in the uh, Bronze Age. We've seen games that have been decided by a player going to Iron. We've seen a lot of games ending in the Tool Age. No stone rushes yet, but that would be a little out of the question, I believe. Now, wow. Look at this, Morik with a beautiful town center right now. These gazelle, this one a little out of place, but I mean, that's to be expected. This is this is looking really, really good. Iron Steel has finally managed to get these gazelle over. He had to go around his, his berries, so it takes a little bit longer. Um, because if you go kind of, you can't go through the berries because the villagers in there obviously push them away. But Iron Steel, no slouch, has gotten it nearly at the same time. He's a little bit slower on that, but... The real tell of who was faster with this is going to be that storage pit timing. Because neither player needs to worry about food for a little bit, so they're going to go for the most efficient. He needs to worry about a food wood pit. 
so they can go for the most efficient wood pit. I believe we're going to see iron steel going right here, probably for his wood. Um, maybe, maybe over here, but I doubt it. I think here's going to be better, and he could potentially have long distance walking for his stone access if he needs slingers. Morik, on the other hand, his wood's a little bit further. He has access to a double forest where he could put his storage pit in between two forests for kind of the double value. You don't need to repit as quickly. Um, but that doesn't affect the game too much. And it looks like he's going to be going for it right here. Right, 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 right here. Yeah, getting two on the other side. And he's going to drop this one here, I think. Yeah, 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 right in the middle. The double forest is a preference, typically, as it gives you more efficient wood income for longer, you know? You have shorter walks. It's almost like a 360 forest, right? As close as you can get. Now, the crossing being found by both players at the same time. The alligators being dealt with. By Iron Steel, and so we see the strategies, the strategy difference again. Iron Steel moving two villagers to the crossing, whereas Mork sending one. If they get into a fight, which I believe we're going to see, Mork has to run, as he cannot contest with his one villager. He will get absolutely destroyed. Bapped to death. Oh, we're going to see a bap. 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 Oh no, he's going to die. He's going to die. Ooh. Huge pickup. What a massive pickup for Iron Steel. And now he gets full freedom to drop this barracks wherever he wants. And here, we're going to see the bap, bap, bap again. And this is a big deal. This is a big deal. So now, what this gives Iron Steel is he has the freedom. He has the freedom to know that Mork cannot cross the river as long as he's confident that there's only one crossing. So... As I've said before, and as we've seen in this tournament, there are opportunities for multiple crossings on these maps. It's not always just one. But one being the standard and more, or sorry, rather, Iron Steel getting that early clubber out. He's going to be going for an extra defense. And he sees the two villagers coming forward. And with the clubber, could we be seeing a very fast game? Because three villagers dying here. Morg really wanted to get across because currently he's under duress and he has no way to pressure his opponent. Morg... Might be going to look for another crossing, following the river a bit, but these two clubbers are going to be upgraded to Axemen pretty quickly. What is the timing going to look like? 20 villagers for each. And the double dock block. So, again, this is kind of mirroring game one, except this time, instead of going for scouts behind his dock block, he's going for an aggressive barracks across, and that's all because of that one villager dying. Now, Iron Steel pushing out has hit tool, he's got three axers, but the downside about this wasted time is that he doesn't see anything. An option could have been a stable here, but he's going to be going for the axer production. The two armor, the axer upgrade should be coming in in just a few seconds. He sees the house, so he's going to redirect, but to the wrong direction. Or is it the right one? If he follows the forest correctly, he could be finding... Morik needs to... Oh, that's a house. I didn't see that. So there is a house here, by the way. Wow. Is that a hole? No. He's okay for now. He just needs to not cut through his house wall. The, the wall upgrade coming in for Morik. He's protecting his villagers quite nicely with these house. House walling in his villagers. This time learning from his mistake from last game. Timeline. Military. Economy. Largest military goes to iron steel. Clearly. But the two, and two villa vantage, that's these two fishing boats. One idle still, so it's not the biggest deal just yet. And did Iron Steel lose an axer here? Both players trading axemen. Slightly inefficiently for Morik, as this axer has lost a decent amount of health. He had the 2 to 1 on that combat, it looks like, while we were checking the timeline. But Morik, without the armor upgrade, is going to get clapped here in the middle of the map. That axer took a lot of free damage from Iron Steel's four axers, and Mork's going to be looking. He doesn't know about the dock block, but he's going to be walking across to scout this out, and he's going to see the two, the three fishing boats, the f now five, and oh my god, an archery range for Iron Steel aggressively. Now this is going to be interesting because Bowman counter axers, 
Big fight here in the middle of the map, but again, Morik outnumbered. We've seen this happen at the same spot a bunch twice now, where Morik gets outnumbered on the crossing, and he got he got caught out. He thought he could get across to get a counterattack going, but Iron Steel, ahead of him in this regard, has already grabbed a dock block for himself. And ooh, the Bowman can pressure these these really exposed villagers now. Before against Axers, they could have repaired. But this Bowman is going to be navigating around. And he will get cleaned up without the armor. Cannot trade efficiently. The battle coming in. Mork with the numbers to defend for now. He's got six to two. We'll take another look at that battle re really quick. As the Bowman gets trapped and killed over off to the side. As I check the rest of the game. Now. Wow. This is interesting. This is getting hard to call at this point. The economy up. Oh, hold on. Yeah, 27. So, at this point, Iron Steel has been going heavy into wood. Oh, and he found two elephants for himself. This is going to give Iron Steel a crazy strong economy. With these six fishing boats, the scout ship on the sea is Morik. Morik is docking up on this side of the map. Sorry, I missed that before. Here's the mini map. If I'm missing anything else, pay attention to it here. But, I, 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 it's really hard to call who's going to be able to do this. With these two bowmen, I would say that Iron Steel's giving himself a real advantage, but two of his axers are hurt, as opposed to two, uh, only one of more axers being hurt. He has the numbers, but with the bowmen in the back, four bowmen in the back, I think Iron Steel's going to have enough units to micro pull the archers back, let the other three hit at this point. At this point, Morik is going to get cleaned up in this little section of the fight, but he has made safe behind this brush. Look at this. With just these four villagers exposed to these now approaching bowmen, Morik's main economy is behind this wall. He's taken this side of the map. But Iron Steel has scouted out this dock now. And oh my gosh. What is this transport doing? What are we going to see here? This transport has to be for something. It's going to be a villager coming across. He's going to try to make some units. Maybe a little preemptive. Maybe a misclick. I'm not sure what that's going to be for. And it could get scouted out. Remembering. Okay, so Morik remembers that there was a scout ship over here. Maybe this villager was brought down to repair, but it has yet to do its job. Now his wood line is going to be pressured. By iron steel. The axe is getting kited a bit, and now that the armor upgrades in, these three bowmen are going to be more than enough to deal with these two axes. Wow. So the game's going to the game's going to stagnate a bit. Both players have made their economies safe from the opponent so far, currently. The question is, will this pressure be enough for Iron Steel? He has the economy lead still, but it is now closing. Mork on the way. Mork sending two scout ships across. Iron Steel with the opportunity to repair this with two villagers will maybe have enough power here. No, he's running to the coast and he gets another scout ship out. This could be enough. That scout ship got a, the scout ships are distracted. They're not focusing. He needs to focus on the scout ship and he will, but he sees the repairman and now Mork will get pushed back here. One villager going down though, maybe a worthwhile trade for him. Mork with another little pit over here. Maybe not realizing that this isn't walled. Could get could get damaged. Now, Iron Steel's aggression at this point is giving him a lot of map control, but Iron St but Mork is working his way. Mork is working his way across the river. It's tough to call. This is tough to call. This is a close game at this point. Wait, hold on. These villagers are exposed. Mork's realizing now, I think. He sees the army coming. He's like, oh crap, I need to wall this. But if Iron Steel sees the wall... Oh my gosh, the... They won't move. There he goes. He got one. One more, and he'll be okay. But will Iron Steel's units even go this way? Now, big naval battle is about to unfold in the middle of the map. Iron Steel outnumbered. One Axer coming across. It will get spotted. It will...
the battle here raging on. Not much to say. It's pretty clear what's happening. Ion steel with the economy advantage. Has the wood upgrade? Has the wood upgrade? No, has the wood advantage. Sorry, neither player has the wood upgrade. Mark getting another three axes across. Now iron steel is exposed here, but he built a range at home to protect himself. This wood line pretty far, but he builds another range. He builds another pit here to repit that. Now, question is, are these three axes going to get anything done at this point? Iron steel idling his army, maybe, maybe focusing a bit on protecting his villagers. He sees this threat. So what's going to happen now? Where, where's this exodus going to lead him? He could go to the safety of the shore, where he has superior ships, at least for now. But the big thing about this, Iron Steel just built a new storage pit at this side of the map, right? To repit this forest. And now he built another one here. That's that's two scout ships, right? That's two ships on the sea. Oh man. Iron Steel, with the numbers advantage for now. But will Mork be able to crawl back with with this little bit of aggression? Oh man, in a market for Mork, we could be seeing a transition into Slingers after all these bowmen. Wait, how did this happen? Oh my gosh, Mork chopped through. That is absolutely devastating. Mork chopped through his wood line, and this could be a game ender. Wow, that just feels bad. You hate to see that happen in a high level game like this. It, but I mean, the villagers chopped through the wood line. Now he's exposed. He's going to be fighting with his villagers. This is it. He has to hold here. He cannot give up this part of the map. He brings in his remaining army. And it might actually be enough. Work with the micro here. He's able to clean up most of these units. And he gets a villager over to the wall, so he's made safe for now. But, again, with that distraction, the sea control firmly grasped by iron steel. The transport will finally die. These three axers are roaming, but not getting any kills. They found nothing over here. But they are going to be approaching this storage pit. Question is... So, who, who's gonna... The question at this point is, who's gonna make the next big move? That was, that was a really big gain for Iron Steel getting in here, but he did lose a lot of his army here. He lost a lot of his pressure. I think we're going to be seeing Iron Steel go for Bronze at this point. He now knows he has full river control. In fact, so much so that he's letting this... <laughs> he's letting that live. This transport is still alive. And the Axers from Morik get cleaned up, but it looks like three villagers died. And it forced four bowmen out. That's, that's a big commitment. It's a lot of food at this point. But I think food is something that Iron Steel is going to have an advantage over. The villagers getting a quick off. Protecting those stone mine. A lot of axers. This is a big army here for Iron for Morik rather. Big army for Morik. Oh, and he opened this? to let some more villagers in. So he's still producing. Let's check economy. 32 to 25. Wow, and the timeline is just brutal now. Wow. But with slingers and axers, Iron Seal gets wiped up again. Once again, Mark is made safe for a little bit of time. Is Iron Steel's advantage of the sea enough? So remember, a lot of that pop differential is ships. And as I said before, the the fish are really spread out here. This is a he had to redock this, but that's not too bad. He now has the freedom to do whatever he wants on the sea. A lot of idle fishing boats. So think about this: how many fishing boats does he have here? Five, nine, thirteen fishing boats from Iron Steel. It's a lot. It's a lot of fishing boats. And another dock from Iron Steel. Yeah, it's a big that's a big villa advantage at this point, but most of that is the fishing boat. So that's food for a faster bronze time. I think Iron Steel hold on. <laughs> Never mind. He's not going bronze. He's not going bronze at all. This is a pretty big army. Grouping the units. He's got the bowmen, he's got the axers. 
And Morik's walking forward to die at this point. He's got some slingers back up. But... This doesn't go in his favor at all yet. Especially without the slinger upgrade. Iron Seal. Not doing the range upgrade. But Morik loses a lot here. Oof. I think Iron Steel might be advancing in this game. Two darks off to the side yes. for Morik. And Morik will be calling it. After seeing this, I mean, he just can't fight this. He just can't fight this. Now, you must say, that was a really good set. This last game, a little bit slower pace.